Some effects artists like to cast ears while the actor is sitting up in a chair. I like to lay them down on a pillow with a disposable towel, something that you don't mind ruining, and when they lay their head down, then I know that I have gravity working with me. Then I can use a plastic cup like this one. I just cut the piece off like I showed, and then we set it down, and then we do one ear at a time, and then I don't even have to use plaster bandages, because then what you have is a nice cup with an ear in mold in it. So this is the best way I like to do. First of all, before we do it, we always clean the ear first, and then we add a little cotton to the ear hole. Just like that. When you cast that, the cotton will come out with the alginate, so you don't have to worry about it. Now we take our Ziploc bag with the little slit, put it on our ear. It keeps alginate off the face and the hair, and also our cup that we cut. We can tell that we have enough room inside there to cast it. So now we're ready to mix our alginate. Okay, here are some of the things you'll need to cast an ear. This is uh, alginate impression material. It's a dental grade alginate. Fast set. I don't always recommend fast set, but this is what I have. I have about a three minute working time with it. Uh, of course it's cherry flavored, but that's okay. We're going to use it on an ear this time. There are prosthetic grade alginates you can also purchase. This was just something I had readily available in my shop. I have about overflow, about three quarters of a cup of alginate. One cup of water is what I'm going to use. First of all, I like to pour the alginate in the bowl first and then the water. And you want to spatulate this really well. It's going to look a little soupy at first, but that's okay. As you spatulate it, you'll break up a lot of the powder that's in it. And this is what you're going to pour on top of the ear to get your impression of the ear. And now this is ready for the ear. We're going to start pouring our alginate now. I asked her to hold it down for me while I pour it. And you're also, when you pour it, this is a little thick for me right now, but that's okay. Just kind of squish it around, get it under her ear, behind her ear, around her ear, as best as you can. And it starts to set pretty quick, so be very fast when you do this. All right, I can say it's already setting. I'm gonna let her sit there for at least three minutes or so. Now, time to remove it. Just be gentle. You wanna keep the plastic with the alginate. Put your finger underneath it. Move it around, pull it off. See how the cotton came with it? That's a gorgeous ear right there. Nice, clean impression. Okay, now we're going to cast our ear. We're using Hydrokel white plaster. It's a kind of a stone. You don't want to use anything like plaster of Paris. It's just way too weak. We're going to add a little bit of water. We're only going to cast like this part of the ear. We're not going to do the whole thing because we only need that part for what we're going to do next. So you add your plaster slowly, mix it in. You'll notice it takes a lot of plaster compared to the water. And I'm mixing up quite a bit here, so we won't need all of this. You want it like a thick pancake batter. Not too thick. You want it to still be runny because you want to get it into these little crevices inside that ear. But if it's too runny, it won't ever set. So you want to make sure you get it in a decent consistency. Okay. Pour to the edges. And then if you shake it, it just fills the whole thing really nice and pulls those bubbles out. And you can even push down if you want and get some bubbles out. Some people try and put their fingers in there or other objects, but that can tear the, that can tear your alginate. Just keep doing this until you get all the bubbles out. And then pour the rest on top like that. That's it. And let that sit. Let that sit and set. And then we'll pull the ear out and then we'll put it into a nice mold that we can just embed it into. A nice plaster mold. And then you'll get a really pretty ear. It's dry. Scratch your finger on it. Doesn't make a mark. So that means it's set. So what we're going to do is take it out gently. 
Best way of cutting it or making it work is to put some scores in it. Score the alginate just lightly. You don't have to go very deep because when you score it, then you can tear it like that and just keep tearing it because you don't want to break the ear in the inside. You want to make sure that it looks nice. Okay, and slowly get that ear. Beautiful. Here we go. Nice looking ear. Okay, now we need to break away all this stuff really close to the ear because we're going to actually take this ear and we're going to embed it into a larger piece of plaster, which means we're going to make a wall around it and we're going to fill it with plaster and then we're going to float this in it. And when it sets, then you get one of those plaster ears really nice. Okay, now we're going to break the plaster away from the ear. Be careful, you don't want to break the ear. Okay, that's good. Now, I want to also, I can patch, there's a little air bubble right here, and there's a little flaw in the back here. I can patch those now or I can patch it later. Uh, so I think I'll patch it now and show you how to patch plaster. So I got some water and then I have some plaster, the same plaster that I made the ear from, which is Hydrokel white. You're going to take a little bit of the water, kind of dab the area, and then you'll watch it absorb into the ear Then add a little plaster to it and slowly fill it in. Just like that. Give it a second. Have a paper towel handy. And you can kind of wipe it away. Maybe add a little more plaster. We'll start on this back piece here. Let it sit a little bit. Let it absorb in. Kind of push it into the rest of the ear. And you may have to do do it twice if it doesn't look as smooth as you want it to look. Like that. That looks pretty good. And there's a little air bubble in here. There we go. I see that her pierce is right here. I can get rid of that. I don't need that. Here it away. That. The uh, cotton that was in her ear sticks out a little bit. So, because this is still kind of wet, because I just molded it today, I'm able to carve away a lot of that. Kind of break it up a little bit in there. Try not to scar the ear. Just kind of pull it away a little bit. And then you can actually even, if it's rough, take some of your plaster and smooth it out. There you go. It's a good looking ear. There's a little bit of an air bubble deep inside here. I, I can clean it out if I want. I don't have to worry about it. I don't think it'll affect anything. But. The ear is ready to make a large mold out of now.
Okay, I got some styrene here. Shape it into a circle. Put some clamps on it so it'll hold. These are little clips, you know, you get for your paper. And find a nice size for it right there. That's a pretty good size. Now I'm going to hot glue this down with a little hot glue. Mm. Fill in a little more if you want. I'll just hold it in place for the plaster. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this about a half an inch, maybe three quarter inch thick with plaster and then I'm going to set this inside the plaster while it's still wet and kind of bob it up and down until it sets in there flush. So this surface here, the surface around the ear is going to be flush in there and that's how you get an ear into a mold so it looks really nice. Similar to that, just a nice uh, circular ear. It won't have these uh, keys yet, but that's what we're going to make. Okay, I got some plaster mixed now. I'm going to pour it in here. I don't know if I have enough, so I might have to make more. Take the ear, set it in there where you want it. I'm putting it a little low, mainly because I want to have room up here to uh, make a point. But you just set it in there, just like that, and you let it set. You can take a brush if you want and kind of push the plaster up onto it a little bit. Be careful because it will sink in a little more. You don't want it to do that. And once the plaster starts to set, you can actually, while it's still semi-soft, you can actually push it in a little bit more. Just leave the ear just like that for about three to four hours and you'll have a nice ear mold. All right, the ear's hard now. We're going to pull it apart. We'll use this rasp to smooth out the edges. And there's a nice ear. All right, now we're going to do a recap. You cast your actor's ears, you put them into plaster, so now you have this nice base with a plaster ear. You can actually go to part three and start sculpting your your pointed ear right on this if you want to. You need to seal it with like a cl crystal clear acrylic or um, also a nice clear gloss. You need to seal it or if you don't want to seal it you can actually just coat it with Vaseline when you make your mold. But what we're going to do next is we're going to make this. This right here is this casted. You cast this to make this. The reason why you make this is so you can make a rigid plastic ear which is super durable you can use it over and over again and it won't break you could drop this thing on the ground it will not break and then we're gonna make this mold from it you can also take this and make this mold from it if you want this can fit right on it if you want to we're gonna start making we're gonna take this now in part two and we're gonna make these Now before I go any further, I want to make this mold a little bit user friendly. In other words, I want to make it so that this tuck here is filled in a little bit, probably in here a little bit and in the back of the ear. The reason why is so that when we do make the mold of the elf ear, we'll also be able to um, get it off really easy. You don't have to do that if you don't want to, it just makes it a little bit easier to remove the mold. In the process that I used for this series, I did not use one with tucks, but I'm going to show you how to do that anyways. We're going to use some Van Aken clay. Um, buy it at Hobby Lobby or FX Supply, wherever you want to buy it. Um, I use this mostly for molds. You'll notice it through this series. I'll use this, this kind of clay a lot. Um, we're going to tuck it underneath here and smooth it out. And then we're going to tuck it under here a little bit. We want to try and leave this ridge here because our ear, elf ear, is actually going to fit there. So you're going to just take it right to the edge of it and tuck it under there like that. 
And then we're also going to get the back of this ear. We're going to fill that in pretty close to about the the ear will go to about this edge here. Maybe a little bit in, but so we're going to try and fill most of this in. You'll find that when you do this for your ears, it's easier to remove from the mold and it also is easier to fit on your ear. When you have all those tucks, it's really hard to tuck it in, especially if you're going to use the ear for other people also. Those tucks are very, very particular to your ear or the ear that was casted from. Once I put the clay in there, I took a little Vaseline on my brush and smeared it on really good and smoothed it out so that the returns are gone, the back is pretty much gone. This ear is ready to mold into a silicone mold. Now we're going to build a wall around the mold using some clay. What this will do is make a small wall for the silicone to seep into and it'll make a, about that thick of silicone and then up around the ear. To hold the clay in place, I'm going to take my knife here, I'm going to pinch it onto the table like that and go all the way around the whole thing and that will hold that wall in place. Now we're going to apply the silicone to it. I'm going to press it into all the cracks and joints best you can. I added a thickener to this silicone so it will stay better. It's called Thixotropic. Looks more like I'm working with frosting than silicone. I've made it kind of thick. But I like it like this because it just makes it easier to work with. Want to make sure you got a good coverage with it. Make sure you got enough up on the ear. The ear is right there. So I'm going to kind of push it up a little bit on it. This is the silicone I bought from FX Supply. Now I'll let that cure for about four hours. Depending on the temperature of, of your room that you're in, um, it's a little cool in my shop. I might let it sit overnight. I'll, I'll come back and check it and touch it and make sure that it's firm. If it's still kind of bouncy after it sets, then I know it needs to set a little longer. Now, I like to make a couple keys in it with a razor blade. All I do is I just take and uh, figure out where I want to go, and then I just do a little wedge out of it. The keys are so when you open it, you'll know how to put it back the same way so you don't get any weird warping because like this side is flatter and this side's a little higher because of the ear so it sets in that plaster mold, that plaster mother mold will look really nice. Now we're going to make the same mold as before, styrene with clips and about an inch gap is what I have. I'm going to work with here. Hot glue in again. Once your plaster is mixed up, go ahead and pour it in. Make sure the wedges you cut out don't have air pockets. We'll let that sit and cure and then we'll be back. Alright, let's take this out, see how it looks. Looks good, looks really good. The rasp just takes away the sharp edges, so it looks nice. Now we got to get it out. Good. Our keys turned out really good. Here is the ear. Very nice. Very nice. So now we have a mold. There we go. Nice looking mold. Plaster ear. This is what it would probably look like. Then I cast If you want to learn more about special effects makeup, please watch the next video in this series by effects artist Tom Jensen and subscribe to Egghead FX. It's a nice ear mold.